Hey everyone and welcome back to the Watch Charts YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be looking into Rolex certified pre-owned pricing and how much more expensive it is compared to buying from other sellers on the market. First, I want to give two quick updates. We're still working on the podcast episode that we promised you guys in the last video. Uh, we actually recorded the whole thing on December 1st, the day that the program was first announced. But then after looking into the program some more, we decided that we had some additional thoughts to share. So we actually decided to go back and record it for a second time. Um, that was done yesterday, so the episode should be out today or tomorrow. Apologies for the delay. The second thing is I got some comments about the quality of the microphone in our uh, previous videos and some noise or distortion. Um, I've upgraded the setup since we're doing YouTube more regularly now. Let me know if this quality is any better. So in case you've missed it, Rolex a couple of days ago announced a certified pre-owned program where they would offer a two-year manufacturer warranty and they debuted the program in six European countries operated by Butcher or Tatorno as it's known in the United States. Uh, the program will be expanded beginning of 2023 and immediately one of the biggest questions was how would the Rolex certified pre-owned pricing compare to other used dealers uh, that are not certified by Rolex. So what we've done is we've looked at the roughly 400 Rolex CPO listings that are available with prices on the Butcher website today and compared their prices against the watch charts market pricing. And there are a few ways that you can look at this. Um, and this was actually one of the realizations that we had that led us to re-record the episode um, because there's obviously going to be a spread of pricing uh, depending on the specific model and collection of Rolex watches that you're looking at. And also how competitive the pricing is um, also depends on what you want to compare it to. Whether you're looking at the private sales market or dealers, whether you're looking at the European market specifically or compared with prices against North America or Asia or other regions around the world and so on. We're based in the United States and a lot of our listeners and viewers are as well. Um, and we also have at Watch Charts a focus on the private sales market because we believe that for enthusiasts, that is the way to get the most competitive price when buying or selling a watch. So that was the context that I was looking at when I first uh, saw the Boucher pre-owned prices. And my reaction was, wow, these are much, much, much more expensive than what we're seeing from private sellers, you know, on forums and stuff like that, uh, or even on eBay. Um, you know, in the case of some watches, like we were looking at GMT Masters uh, or some Mariners, it seemed like, you know, in some cases, these prices were as much as 50% or even more compared to the uh, American private sales market. But digging a little bit deeper, and as I said, comparing with the different markets out there, potentially Rolex CPO pricing may actually be more reasonable than what we initially um, thought. So when you compare the average price of Rolex CPO based on these 400 listings uh, on Boucher's website against the global private sales market, as we said, um, the premium is about 27% as of December 3rd, which is yesterday as of the time of this recording. Um, and, you know, that is quite a hefty premium. But then when you look specifically at the European private sales market, you know, European prices are uh, generally the most expensive on the market compared to North America and Asia. Um, not exactly sure why that is. If you guys have any insights, um, any, any European listeners uh, or viewers have any insights on that, I'd be very curious to get your opinion. But when you compare with the European prices, which we know are traditionally higher, then the premium becomes a little bit more reasonable, about 21% across those listings as we estimate. And then finally, if you compare with European dealers, um, obviously we know that dealer pricing is going to be a bit more expensive as well, then the premium goes down to 16%. And so this is the number that we're actually tracking on our website. You can go to watchcharts.com slash Rolex CPO and see that the daily updates for this number based on our market prices, our estimates for European dealer prices um, against the current prices that are published on the Butcher website. Another thing to note is that Butcher has not really updated the pricing on their website or even the set of listings on their website over the last three days since the program launched. 
So we're not sure how good of a job they're going to do in terms of staying up to date on that and giving us the latest prices that they are actually offering uh, to customers. The other thing that's interesting is if you break down the premium uh, based on collection, and again, this is the premium of the Rolex CPO pricing versus other non-Rolex certified European dealers. Um, and immediately what you notice is that the highest premiums are generally for the most in-demand models. Uh, the Daytona, the Submariner, the GMT Master, uh, these again as of December 3rd are all showing uh, CPO premiums about 20% or more. Um, there's also not very many of them in the program when it, as, it, uh, as it is now when it first debuted. Um, the bulk of the listings are for day justs and day dates. And I think this has something to do with Rolex's strategy on who they're making the Rolex CPO program for. Um, and I'll dig into that a little bit more when we talk about is Rolex CPO worth it. But yeah, the highest premiums are for the sports models, um, the classic references, the classic models as Rolex calls them, uh, are a little bit more uh, reasonable in terms of the premium. So finally, there's the question of who is the Rolex CPO program made for and uh, is it worth it for you? As you can see, you're paying, you know, no matter how you want to spin it, a solid premium above the existing market prices. And if you want to really compare against the private sales market, or if you're someone who, for example, travels frequently and has access to the entirety of the international market, then you can definitely get much, much more competitive pricing from another source. Um, the other thing you have to factor in here is, okay, what are you getting for the extra money that you're paying these Rolex certified pre-owned dealers. Um, and to me, it's two things. The first is uh, convenience. I think that's the biggest thing you're getting. You don't have to deal with another third party. You can trade into Rolex. You can trade up towards or just sell your watch to Rolex um, without ever having to deal with anyone else. And that's probably, you know, I think who Rolex made this program for. They're targeting customers that are valuing convenience. Um, that are valuing a seamless trade-in experience who are maybe not, you know, collectors or enthusiasts, but people just who have, you know, one or two Rolex watches, maybe they buy a new one every five to 10 years, um, and then they want to be able to have a way to upgrade to the next, you know, Rolex watch that they get. The second thing that obviously you are getting is the Rolex uh, two-year guarantee. And I don't know how much weight I put on the value of the guarantee because Rolex already offers a five-year transferable warranty when the watch is sold new, right? And so CPO watches are generally going to be ones that are, you know, modern, um, that are in good condition. So I think it's unlikely that you would be in a situation where you'd have to take advantage of the two-year warranty especially considering how reliable and the reputation of the quality and the uh, yeah, reliability of Rolex watches. Rolex dealers don't want to incur additional cost of servicing all these watches. So, you know, they're going to be picking uh, certified pre-owned watches that they're confident in that are going to um, not have to be taken in where that warranty is not going to have to be used. And of course, you know, you are getting also some sort of uh, peace of mind when it comes to authenticity, but how much of a deal this really is. Again, I'm not so sure. How much more would you trust Rolex versus a watch box or a Crown & Caliber or some other dealer uh, that's you know highly established that's been in the market for over a decade or something like that? You know, It's really hard to say. Rolex has made their position clear in the press release that they published when they first announced this program that you know they only want you to buy new and used Rolex watches from someone who is authorized by Rolex to sell them. Um, but, you know, the secondary market is obviously at this point, you know, been around for a long time. It is a legitimate market, as everyone knows. Um, and I think that if you go with a reputable dealer, there's not going to be a meaningful difference in the level of, you know, peace of mind that you have when it comes to authenticity. So is it worth it? At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide. How much do you value the assurance you're getting from Rolex? How much do you value the convenience of being able to trade in and not have to deal with a third party? Those are decisions that are going to be made at an individual level. But at least now we know, you know, Rolex, obviously they're not controlling the market in terms of setting a CPO price. They're going by the market price and they are adding uh, their premium on top of it 
as is you know traditionally done in CPO programs. This current situation is a little bit unique because uh, the market prices for the vast majority of Rolex watches at this point are still above retail. And it, I think Rolex had an opportunity here to maybe put some pressure, have some influence on trying to regulate prices. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, what are your thoughts of the Rolex CPO program? What do you think about this premium? Is it surprising to you? Is it a reasonable premium to pay? Would you be a potential customer for the Rolex CPO program? Uh, leave all your comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you like the video and I'll catch you guys next time.